Bishop, you are the Anglican Church of Canada's first national indigenous bishop. Help us understand what the doctrine of discovery was. The doctrine of discovery is assumed by most people to refer to the idea that uh, Columbus discovered the Americas, and that really isn't what it's about. The doctrine of discovery refers to a number of different ideas woven together in law, philosophy, uh, church doctrine. Uh, Western church institutions played an animating role in it, but it also had something to do with, with law in, in that the idea was that if you discovered a place that was uninhabited, that you were, you were the owner of that. It was yours. You had the, the right of discovery. So now, when applied in the Americas, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very important and subtle uh, difference, maybe not so subtle. Um, the idea was you had to assume that the people there were so primitive that they could be discovered, that um, they lacked the uh, basic uh, infrastructure of civilization as, as Western societies knew it. And then you, you had the right, you even had the duty to help them out by uh, taking over their lands. You had the right to occupy their lands if they were yours. You had the right to exploit their lands in any way you would seem, that it seemed fit. So are we over this doctrine yet? And in what way does the heart of Jesus give us direction as a country in moving forward toward reconciliation? Yeah, that's a beautiful question, thank you. Um, we are not over it. I mean, many people who might have compassion towards indigenous people would say, well, the best thing is for them to act uh, modern, to act civilized. Um, uh, it, it is possible to hold on to the spiritual, spiritually centered values of indigenous people and be quite modern. It is possible to hold on to the, to the uh, creation related values of indigenous people and still be quite modern. We're seeing this again and again. The idea that indigenous people would be, would die out soon, uh, either as a cultural expression or, or even as a physical expression is, 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 is um, in, the, in light of today, uh, absurd and, and again, cruel. But for Christians, uh, this is particularly pernicious, you know, we believe in the word made flesh. <laughs> the idea that Jesus becomes living and real in a people, a culture, a language, their values, their systems. Certainly the gospel challenges their, 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 their language, their culture, their systems. That's, that's, that's clear. And, and it might be good <laughs> in this regard to challenge the, the larger culture in terms of what the word of God, the Bible, uh, says about these things because Clearly, it doesn't ask you to obliterate culture. It asks you to uh, water the seed of the Word of God that exists in culture from the beginning of time. In, in essence, the, the, the doctrine of discovery denies the doctrine of creation, the idea that God planted uh, the living Word in each and every human heart and each every, in every thing that is in creation. It is a denial of that, of that doctrine, really a denial of the, of the doctrine of Christ, that uh, Christ is living in, in, in everyone because each, each person, by their creation, uh, has the fingerprints of the Word of God. In what way does the heart of Jesus for residential school survivors and their families give direction to walking in forgiveness? It is difficult for anyone other than someone who has died upon the cross to, 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 to speak of forgiveness to others who have suffered uh, grievously. What, what we're talking about in terms of the indigenous people is we're talking about freedom from that, that pain, freedom from the prison that, that, that lack of forgiveness places one in. And so, although we're, we're gentle about it, we try not to in terms of forgiveness, express the prerogatives of the institutional church. But what we try to do is to show the, the freedom that um, forgiveness and turning your life around is as it is promised in Christ. Jesus 
um, said his great gift to the, to the universe was repentance and, and the, the capacity to enter into new life. I think that um, uh, too often uh, what uh, survivors hear is get over it. <laughs> um, but what, um, what Christ offers is a very different thing. Christ offers justice as he offers mercy. Christ offers um, a new world as he offers forgiveness. And these things are, are set, spoken very gently uh, in, in the presence of, of survivors. But I would like to say, for many people in the church, even people who are non-indigenous, I've heard them say, the compassion that they've received from the survivors is one of the greatest things that they've experienced in life. And um, so often we see that this is true. Those who have come to grips with what has happened and who have found a way to move forward in their lives, they have a power and an authority which uh, can only come from, from that new life. Bishop Mark McDonald, thank you for joining me.